Come on in and don't be late. Let's learn science with Mr. Red UK. G'day Year 12 Chemistry class. Well, I'm sure you've all seen this before, this next demonstration. We've got sodium hydroxide here, NaOH, and we've got an acid here, hydrochloric acid, HCl. We've all seen this before. HCl, little bit of HCl, goes into the conical flask. Add phenylphthalene indicator, and seems to have bombed out this experiment. Clear, nothing happens. Until we add a bit of sodium hydroxide. We already can see the pink appear. Till it gets to the point where you've added enough sodium hydroxide to make it stay pink. That's a hot pink. The light pink is the colour you're aiming for if you wanted to just neutralise the base with the acid. Well, I'm sure you've seen that hundreds of times in your junior years of schooling, but today we're going to explain how indicators work, such as phenylphthalene. Enjoy. So we're in 4.3 now, looking at acid base indicators. The learning goals for this section is that acid base indicators are weak acids or weak bases and they're in equilibrium with it, their conjugate pair. And we're going to look at the relationship between the pH range of an acid base indicator and its pKa. We're going to see that indicators change colour when the pH is equal to the pKa. And we're going to identify an appropriate indicator for a titration. So let's get into it. So an indicator a chemical substance that changes colour at different pH values. So, basically an indicator, like we said in the learning goal, is an, a weak acid or a weak base. Most indicators are weak acids, and the general formula for an indicator that's a weak acid is HIN, IN for indicator, H to show that there's an ionizable hydrogen ion. In solution, the acid is in equilibrium with its conjugate base, and the conjugate base is IN negative. Now, there's, again, there's no such thing as IN as a uh, chemical formula or, or an element. It just stands for indicator. This is the conjugate base form. So this is your equilibrium expression equation. Uh, the acid, the weak acid, is the, the indicator on the left. It's uh, mixed with water. It's, indicators aren't usually pure, they're mixed with water and those two reactants are in equilibrium with the ion, ionic form of the indicator, which is the conjugate base, and a hydronium ion. Quite often, the way indicators work, of course, is that they're one colour in the acidic form and they're another colour in the basic form. That's how they work. That, what, that's what makes them so cool. So, just to bring Le Chatelier's principle into the whole, whole thing, um, at low pH, at low pH, the concentration of hydrogen ions is high. So the equilibrium position is on the left and the solution shows colour A, the colour of HIN. So we'll say that again. Basically, uh, when the pH is low, that is when there's a high concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions like here, when it's high, the stress, the stressor is high, is high... Uh, concentration of hydronium ions. So when that's high, the equilibrium will push left. When it pushes left, the colour will be A. So alternatively, if the pH is high, 
Okay, remember when you've got a high pH alkaline, so therefore hydrogen ion concentration is low, the equilibrium position is on the right, indicating colour B. So um, when the pH is high, the concentration of hydrogen ions will be low, and so the equilibrium will push to the right because the hydronium ions were low. Yeah, the equilibrium shifts in a direction to compensate for that. So it'll be B, uh, colour B in basic solutions and colour A in acidic. So here's a classic example uh, that I was showing you at the very start with that demonstration with phenylphthalein. Phenylphthalein is a colourless weak acid and this is the symbol for that. Um, the pH-PH is phenylphthalein, and the H indicates the acid part of phenylphthalein. Phenylphthalein dissociates in water to form pink ions, pH-PH negative. So without reading all that, let's just have a look at this equation here. When the pH is low, in other words, when there's a high, high concentration of hydronium ions, okay, you increase the hydronium ions, you'll push the equilibrium in the opposite direction. If for those of you who are having trouble with, still having trouble with uh, Le Chardelier's principle, it's dead easy. It's as simple as this. If you increase something, for example, hydronium ions in this situation, equilibrium will shift in the opposite direction, producing more of this stuff, which is colourless. Okay, high pH shift to the left, colourless, oh, sorry, <laughs> high pH, sorry, delete what I just said. Uh, low pH, high concentration of hydronium ions, in, a, in other words, acidic conditions, it'll go colourless, just like the demonstration. But, and when the pH is high, in other words, when it's really, really basic, the equilibrium will shift back to the right, to, make, uh, to produce hydronium, more hydronium ions to relieve that stress and it'll turn pink. So is there such a thing as an indicator that's a weak base? Well, yes, there is, but they're not as common. So the same thing applies, Le Chatelier's principle applies. If, if the indicator that's a weak base is placed into a solution with lots of hydroxide ions, in other words the pH is high, it'll shift to the left according to this equation here and so it'll go colour A. But if it was placed in an acidic solution where, uh, in, yeah, into an acidic solution it'll push right. Um, it'll push in, into a direction that produces more hydroxide ions to relieve that acidic, acidic condition. Exactly at what point does an indicator change colour? Well, indicators change colour when the solution contains equal amounts of both forms. Consider this equilibrium equation just like before. Here we've got an acid. Uh, when the indicator is a weak acid and it's in equilibrium with its conjugate base and well that was uh, that's the conjugate acid of of water but anyway we left water out in this instance when you apply the equilibrium law to this equation here the following is true so we just write out our, our uh, equal uh, acid dissociation constant expression so it'll be the concentration of hydrogen ions here times, we usually leave it out times, but anyway, times the concentration of the ionised indicator, the conjugate base, divided by, remember it's just the product concentrations, divided by the concentration of the acid form, the weak acid form of the indicator on the left. And remember all of these concentrations are at equilibrium. So at equilibrium uh, we get to the the situation where the ionized form of the uh, indicator 
is equal to the acidic form. Now, in the textbook it says at equilibrium, but it's probably better to use the word um, words equivalent point Equivalence point is the point in a titration when the reactants have reacted in the molar ratio of the balanced chemical equation. So it's the point at which um, the, the concentration of the conjugate base form of the indicator is exactly equal to the concentration of the acidic form of the, the indicator, the equivalence point. In, uh, titrations we often use the word endpoint the term endpoint the endpoint is the point in the titration when the indicator changes color so the two different things okay these things two different things equivalent point equivalent point and endpoint so let's carry this on from before um, so if we go back to our Ka expression before, I'll just rewrite that out from before. Now, hopefully you'll know as much about maths as I do, and that's not very much at all, that because at the equivalence point, we, our um, two forms of the indicator are equal, equal in concentration, here they are here again, IN and HIN. When, when you have the same number up as the numerator and in the denominator, you can cancel those out. For example, if I just quickly uh, write something out here. Okay, you've got a three there and a three there. That'll cancel out. Uh, to, um, to equal 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, divided by 3 is 2. So when you've got a nut, the same number at, at the numerator and in the denominator, they can cancel out, just like here. These two cancel out, which means that Ka equals the hydrogen ion concentration. The acid dissociation constant, which in the last lesson, the last video we saw was a number. When that number equals the hydrogen ion concentration, that's the equivalence point. That's a point at which the, um, the indicator changes colour. So they are similar, these two things, but they're describing two different things. The end point is the point at which the colour changes. The equivalent equivalence point is the point at which the Ka equals the hydrogen ion concentration. Uh, also, you can, um, you can deduce that if the Ka equals the hydrogen ion concentration, well then the pKa will equal the pH. Okay, so indicators, indicators change colour when the pKa for that weak, weak acid, weak acid indicator is equal to the pH. Various indicators change at various pH ranges. As you can see from the table here, methyl orange changes uh, colour in the range of 3.1 to 4.4. In other words, uh, in the acidic form, when, when um, the, the solution is a pH of below 3.1, it'll be red. And above 4.4, it'll be yellow. So that's how you read this chart. Fennel red, for example, uh, is the opposite. If the pH is below 6.8, it'll be yellow. And when the pH is above 8.4, it'll be red. And just like in the example before with the, uh, the demonstration, phenylphthalein, another indicator, that's its pH range below 8.3, pH of 8.3, it'll be colourless. Above 10, it'll be pink. So there's a few different words we need to understand when choosing the right indicator for the titration with, that we're doing. 
you know what titration is. We did a few titrations in class. It's uh, finding out the concentration of an unknown acid using um, the uh, using a, another solution that have has a known concentration. The standard the standardized solution. The equivalent point, like I said before, is the point in the titration when the number of moles of acid exactly balances the number of moles of base. But just have a look at the word titrant. Titrant is, um, is uh, you know, how you have an acid and a base. The acid is being added to the base. Well, the, the one that, has, that you know the concentration for is the titrant. The name of the solution that, that you don't know the concentration of is the analyte. Analyte is the unknown solution. The titrant is the known solution for the acid-base pair. So pH indicators are important for finding the end point, which is close to the equivalence point. So the end point is the point when the indicator actually changes colour. For a titration to be accurate, it's important to choose an indicator that changes colour close to the equivalence point. Well, let's skip to the next page now. The next page is page 108. Here we go. And we're going to be looking more at titration curves. We've been looking at titration curves in the past, but a titration curve is a graph of pH against volume of reactant added. So here's an example. Volume uh, pH along your y-axis against volume of reactant added on the x-axis. So this figure, figure 2 here, shows the titration curve of a strong acid with a strong base. It shows how pH changes during the course of the titration. So we start out at the very start with zero number of millilitres of, for example, base added. Just say we've got strong acid in our, in our um, beaker, uh, not beaker, or beaker or conical flask. But as we add more and more base from the burette, from, P, uh, from zero mils to one millilitre of base added, the pH, whoop, the pH hardly changes, changes at all. It increases a little bit. See how that line goes up a little bit? Uh, but on neutralization, the pH rapidly increases from pH of 3 to pH of about 11, 11 to 12. The equivalence point is pH of 7. The equivalence point is the point, this point here where the pink dot is, halfway along the vertical section is the equivalence point. In this case, it's an easy task to choose the indicator because the, the, the vertical line is such a long spread of pHs, from pH of 3 to pH of seven, uh, 11. So you can pick any indicator that changes colour in that pH range. But the ideal one is right in the middle of the vertical line pH of 7. Okay, so um, in this instance, the end point also co coincides with the equivalence point. So this is a tight, when you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base, just like the demonstration at the start, the strong acid there was HCl and the strong base was NaOH, sodium hydroxide against hydrochloric acid. That's your typical pH curve for strong acid and strong base titration. Now logically, this titration, just from looking at the graph, is quite obviously uh, strong acid with a strong base. And it's obvious that you begin with a strong acid in the conical flask. Strong acids have a really low pH. That's pH of between 1 and 2 is really low. So that's a strong acid and you've got base in the burette. You're adding base to the acid because right at the end 
when you have gone past the equivalence point, if you added a bit more base, the pH would shoot right up. Likewise, this is the way to interpret the next graph here. This one is titrating, when you're titrating a weak acid with a strong base. Weak acid with a strong base. The, the weak acid is in the um, conical flask sitting on the bench and you've got a strong base in the burette. So I hope you haven't forgotten how to titrate. So if we're taking this girl, for, for example, in the burette you've got a strong base and in the um, conical flask here that she's holding in her left hand is a weak acid. Weak acid, oh, where are we now? Wait, uh, all right. So here's figure three. This is the titration curve for, for this titration for a weak acid with a strong base. The weak acid is less acidic, so therefore it has a slightly higher pH compared to the strong acid. Typical of this is uh, acetic acid, pH of 3. And when you're titrating with a strong base, notice how the pH increases more sharply compared to more slowly up in that, in that titration. So it increases more uh, sharply until you get to the point where the pH rapidly increases and this rapid increase, the vertical part of the line, is far more narrow compared to that one. Okay, and so in the middle part of this increase, uh, the vertical part in the, in the graph is called the equivalence point and in this case the equivalence point is 8.5, pH of 8.5 and so this is typical of a weak acid with a strong base. The equivalence point is, is, is always above uh, pH of 7. Um, and so that narrows the field down a bit as far as the indicator that you choose. The indicator up here, virtually anything because of the, such a big range of um, equivalence point there, but such a narrow range here. Uh, the only suitable indicator in this situation would be phenylphthalein. Phenylphthalein, let's check from table 1, 8.5, so go back to table 1. Yep, phenylphthalein changes in that range. It's the only one in this list of indicators that changes at that pH. So if we look at the complete opposite of this situation, you're titrating a weak base with a strong acid. The, indi the indication of that is the pH you start with, the pH of the base that you begin with. Uh, weak bases are often around pH 10 to 11 and you're titrating with a strong acid so it's a bit of a sharp sharp decrease, sharper decrease in uh, pH when you're adding the strong acid and then you've got a vertical drop and the strong acid uh, must uh, finishes with that pH there. The middle of this vertical drop is the equivalence point and that's between 5 and 6. So with this pH range, uh, the vertical drop pH range is, you know, 4 to four to 8, or it says here 3 to 7. 3 to 7, you're looking for indicators from this table that change colour within that range. And you can see from that table there's, there's a few different indicators, methyl orange, brom bromocresol green and methyl red. Well what does the titration curve for a weak acid with a weak base look like? I've had to go to the internet uh, to, to look for this titration curve. This is from Quora on the internet and it shows the typical titration curve for a weak acid with a weak base. Um, so I'll ask you guys did you start with the weak base? Was there all weak acid? 
what was in your conical flask at the very f first instance? Well, it's evident that you started with the base and you added the acid. So more, you added more and more acid until it got to the pH of around about four. So a titration curve for weak acid, weak base doesn't have that vertical, uh, sharp vertical drop. It's more of a gentle drop and the pH range is much more narrow. It's barely a pH range of two here. So having this sort of titration curve makes it virtually impossible to use any indicator to find the equivalence point. It's very hard to find the equivalence point when you haven't got a sharp drop. So in this case, they use uh, scientists use other techniques uh, such as a conductometric titration. Uh, the equivalence point is the point when the conductivity changes suddenly due to the presence of the water and the salt. Remember, when you combine a weak acid or any acid with any base, just like in any other neutralization reaction, it produces a salt and water. Acid plus base gives a salt and water. And so you guys should know that when you, if you stuck a conductivity probe in a salty solution, it would, um, it would show up a reading, a higher reading compared to what you would have at the start. Well, that concludes this current chapter, chapter four, section 4.3, acid base indicators. Don't forget your check your learning questions and of course, two pages after that, your revision questions for this chapter. Good on you guys, have a good long weekend. See ya.